So when I worked at an SEO agency, um, I was very disorganized when I first started working there because we had maybe 20 to 30 clients and we were just selling any old retainer to any client. You know, there weren't any set packages. We didn't productize anything. And we were just very disorganized. We didn't know what we were doing for each client on a, on a month to month basis. Yet we'd promised all these, you know, all these results and we couldn't really track it very well. We couldn't really, um, project any profits into the future because we didn't know how much time people would take on each client. We had mostly in-house staff. Um, so we decided to systemize everything and this is the system we use and I'm, I'll give this to you as a gift. So basically we used to have all of our clients just listed in a Google sheet. So on the left hand side, and then we created tracks. We call them tracks for each client or packages, whichever word you want to use. Uh, but all this meant was, um, some kind of set deliver deliverable process, um, depending on the type of client it was. So if it was a local client in a non-competitive industry, it might be local one or local two. Um, if it was a competitive client, we have another set of deliverables. And if we had an enterprise client, we'd have another set of deliverables. And these were just jumping off points. So we knew basically, right, we're going to spend X amount of on deliverables for this client and potentially this many hours for this client, you know, for the in-house stuff, technical stuff that happens on a month to month basis. Um, so we, we could really easily then price up a package and that would make the price for the retainer. So we knew we was always making profit. So we knew if we signed five more enterprise clients, we knew exactly how much profit we'd make if we'd need to hire any more staff um, and how much, you know, deliverables we'd need for that client. Um, another thing we used to do was sell like add-ons. So whether we so sold social media management or paid, typically that was done in-house. Um, so it was, you know, an hourly an hourly kind of deal. We didn't sell by hours. You know, I don't, I don't really like selling by hours, but internally, your internal staff can only be measured by hours, you know, unless you start paying them by project, which, you know, if you're, if you've got hired staff in house that are intimate with client accounts, hourly is the best way to, to pay them. Your clients don't need to know, you know, explicitly the amount of hours spent on something or, or the amount of, you know, time spent on something because you're not selling, you shouldn't be selling it that way. You should be selling it by value. You know, you could spend one hour on CRO and double someone's business. If you, but if you sell it by the hour, that you're only going to make 500 quid or a thousand quid. So my point here is this is more of an internal document to make sure you're always making profit on every client. And so you always know what needs to be done every month for each client every deliverable, every uh, hour that needs to be spent. Um, and this is this is the way to organize it. And this is what, how I used to organize it. So we've got the clients on the left-hand side. We've got their package, which is their jumping off point. This is what we're going to do. Now, there can be customizations to this. There's, there's built-in tolerance for this. Um, but... It, <laughs> You can't veer off too far because it will, it, you know, it can mess with the profit, it can make things unpredictable, but there is built in tolerance. And I'll show you how that works in a moment. And then I've got the retainer here, how much that costs. So obviously if, um, if retainers are a set price, it makes it really easy. But if they're not and you're giving some clients a bigger price or maybe some clients are negotiating you down, you can still put the price in here and all this spreadsheet will, will work it out. Um, and then we have deliverables. Deliverables are everything you're going to do for the client on a monthly basis. So obviously you're going to spend time, resources on this client outside of deliverables, you know, the account management and maybe a bit of reporting. And obviously you've got your, your overheads and stuff like that, but we're not going to look at those for the purpose of this because these are your moving costs. These are your, these are your gross costs, cost of uh, sale. So, we used to do a few things for for our clients and that, you know, nothing surprising here. Citations like your local directories, blog posts, blogger outreach, uh, niche edits, high-end links. We didn't really call it digital PR then, but we had some high-end links. Um, these were all outsourced eventually 
this was so much easier because we didn't have in-house staff spending, you know, time on things, um, which is then very hard to, you can't, it's very hard to resell time, you know. Um, so in the end, we, we started outsourcing it to um, a vendor. And yeah, it was a lot simpler because we knew for every unit of something we put in our, in our retainers, we knew how much it cost. So, you know, 25 citations at five pound each cost one, two, five, right? Okay. And then one blog post at a hundred pound, you know, costs a hundred pound. Same with blog routes, niche edits, digital PR. So these were deliverables and the costs were very easy to figure out. The slightly trickier ones are the ones where we've got internal staff and they're paid by hours. They're getting intimate with client accounts. We don't want to really outsource it. So content optimization. So in some of the retainers, we promised like to go in and optimize content on a regular basis. We don't need to say how many hours we're going to do that, but internally we decided on what that would be. Uh, and in this sheet, we put how many hours it would be. Now at the start of the month, you, we may decide that some clients may need this a little bit more than others, um, or they may need it more than the promised retainer. So we could be flexible and we can say two hours. We don't want to be too, we don't want to veer off too far from the package, like I said. But if a client needs two hours one month and we decide to do it, we can swallow that cost. Uh, you know, we don't have to charge more for the client. We don't have to say, oh, we spent an hour longer. Can you give us an hour, you know, more, more money? We're not tying any, any of our um, retainer costs to hours. Remember, this is just internally. Um, and then there might be some tech, tech time. So if, the, if a client's website is broke, you might say, oh, you know, we need one hour just to fix that. Let's build that in. Now, again, I don't, I didn't really believe in going back to the client and asking for more money because we're spending it on tech, tech stuff that we want to fix and stuff. I think it should all be built in to the, the price of retainer. And as long as your retainers aren't priced on time, the priced on value, you should have enough margin to, to swallow the cost on an ad hoc basis. It's not as if you're going to be doing tech every every uh, month. You know, It's only if something is really needed. Um, and then uploading time. So sometimes there may be content to upload. You can build that in. Social media, if that's an add-on, maybe you do an hour, hour a month or two hours a month, you can build that in. If you need to spend more time, again, this spreadsheet just works it out for you. So you put two hours and it's going to cost 300 quid. And then uh, paid media so if you know if you're spending four hours on it or you need to spend five hours it will automatically work that out and then what you want to do is look at the total costs of all your deliverables so that includes the outsource stuff includes the hourly stuff it doesn't matter you can mix it all in with this so if these are outsourced this this unit cost up here is just the price per unit a unit might be a deliverable a unit might be an hour you'll just put it in here and calculate the cost and then you'll know the profit per client so on a on a monthly basis you can look and plan out your whole month of deliverables whether that's outsourced or time cost and then you can look at the profit and the margin so we used to aim these are just made up numbers so obviously some of these are looking a bit silly but we used to aim for 50% margin on our, on our deliverables, 50 to hundred percent, depending on, you know, depending on the retainer and depending on the season of, of, of business we were in. Um, obviously later on, we were, we were shooting for a lot more profit because we were offering a lot, a lot more valuable things. Um, but yeah, we used, we used to make sure we was at least earning 50% margin on this, uh, deliverable side. Um, and if something was below, we would look into why, what is it, what is it that we're, we're doing this month that's, that's bringing the margin down. And then we decide if, if it was worth it or not. Um, because sometimes it is worth going lower on the margin for one month. If it means in subsequent months, you're going to get a bigger return, more results, happier clients. You know, you might want to spend two hours of tech. So for example, this client here is on 43% um, margin. We could end up 
spend two hours uh, of tech time because we think, okay, let's let's fix the site. It's going to get bigger results next month. Um, it brings the margin down to twenty three percent. We might find that acceptable because we you know we were in it for the long run and we want happier clients. Um, you may also decide it depends on what you promise your client. You know, if you're very, very specific with your deliverables, you, you might find it hard to do this. But we used to, you know, borrow from Peter to pay Paul. So if if you're spending more time on tech hours, you might want to drop, you know, some some paid deliverables, some uh, links for that month, you know, bringing the profit margin back up to 47. So you kind of so you're balancing it out and you're saying to the client, look, we're doing a few less links few less deliverables this month because we want to focus on the tech side, but the next month it's back to normal. And you can put all this into the report. It depends how flexible you are. I would recommend being pretty flexible with your retainers and not focusing too much on the deliverables. You can give a range of links. You can give a range of hours spent on other activities, you know, but you need to have this flexibility to get the best results for your clients. You don't want to be saying, oh, the, you know, we really wanted to do some tech work on your site, but because we've promised you four links every month, we can't. So will you give us an extra 500 quid to the tech stuff? It gets very complicated, messy, it's not a good buyer experience. And I think agencies need to get more into the mode of selling their retainers like products, you know, like very, very easy to understand, very easy experience, no need for extra money here or extra money there, everything in a nice report. But yeah, I hope this is useful. Um, I'm going to share this spreadsheet with you. Just plug in the numbers. The formulas are pretty simple. You just put in your deliverables here, and then you put the cost per unit of deliverable there, and it all works out for you. Your margin, your profit, and you've got to put your package, what package the, um, the clients in as well. And these are just made-up clients, so, you know, just in case you were, you know, nosing on their websites or whatever. Anyway, I hope that's useful and I will see you on the next one.